Mr. Dylan O'Donnell. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Dylan. Wow. There are way too many people here for this talk. Yep, that's me. I bet you're probably wondering how I got here. I'm still wondering that myself. Let me tell you a story about NEEF 2019. But first, we're going to have to go back. arrived at the uh, NIAC conference, NIAC 2019, and I'm about to go in. It's Hello. Tolga from the Astro Imaging Channel. That's right. And, uh, you are, you are organizing. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm an official. There are a couple of new products uh, that oh, yeah. I'm very excited about. Did you see Astrophysics Mark 2? No, I didn't. Oh, you have to go see. Okay, Astrophysics. Fully encoders. Yep. Absolutely encoders. There's a brand new off-axis guider from Optech okay. that has a motorized rotator on the, the helical focuser side. Right. So if you have uh, non-power focal filters yep. and you focus your main camera, you can adjust your guide camera to yep. it. Pretty exciting product. Okay. Fantastic. Bye, man. I'll have to see you more. I'll see you around. Around. That's me, Dylan O'Donnell. Good to meet you. Good to see you. <laughs> the Rasa. The visual adapter for the Rasa. <laughs> oh, oh, you do the No. This is, you do the math. It does not. <laughs> it, is not. <laughs> it does not. <laughs> about to be a talk from PRISM software about the Hyperion Astronomy software which is uh, really promising looking and something I've been playing around with it a bit myself. Um, I did find a few little bugs in the software but uh, the developers are sorting that out and I'm really interested in the analysis side of the software which is asteroid detection, automatic asteroid detection and how we can use that to basically find and report near Earth objects to the minor planet center. That was pretty good and I like PRISM and I do want to explore PRISM further, uh, particularly the analysis side of the software. There are lots of programs that will do all the same thing, right? You know, Sequence Generator Pro is what I'm on now, I've been using Nebulosity, there's all sorts of different things. But I think what PRISM is trying to do is to connect everything together so that you can use one piece of software for most of it. In some ways it makes the system simpler and less vulnerable to mistakes and errors. So here we are at NEEF 2019. This video is sponsored by Bintel, but I also have to thank Lestron for uh, sponsoring my visit to come over here and actually talk, uh, which is going to be insane. Uh, this picture behind me is my picture of Karina, and it's really cool to see it. I'm so big in such a hallowed space. So I will go around and I'll show you a bit of what's going on. 
what are the big stories, the big new releases this year. And I have to say, at the moment, I'm feeling like it's ASCOM. This news about ASCOM Alpaca is huge. So more on that later. Neef is always fantastic. This is probably the best weather we've ever had at Neef on the first day. It's crystal clear skies, a little bit cold, but the crowd is good. Uh, the place is crowded, and we are waiting to have a fun, fun, fun time. Yep. And you've got your uh, solar rig set up there, all ready to go. We are using the Coronado uh, double stack 90 millimeter telescope today, and I'll be demoing their products all day. And there are several other brands as well. On the field. Oh, uh, and how are you surviving the solar? Uh, it's not easy. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually branching off a little bit into nature photography and how sunlight affects animals and plants. Uh, we call uh, bird photography in the, in the States, but I know in Australia uh, the bird is a good looking girl. That's not the same thing. We're photographing uh, birds and animals and how sunlight interacts with those creatures. And if any Australians watch this, I love you guys. I love you guys. I love you guys. Keep it together. <laughs> Thanks very much, Steve. Yeah. We're here with Corey Lee, the CEO of Celestron at uh, Neef. How are you, Corey? Good, doing great. Yeah. I'd like to thank you for, for bringing me as your guest to, um, to Neef, and I'll be speaking tomorrow. Uh, hopefully I won't embarrass you or the company. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd like to thank you for coming here and uh, helping us and, and also talk to uh, uh, the general amateur astronomy community <laughs> and just about the wonders of the southern sky. Southern, uh, amateur. And uh, I should ask, how are you finding the reception for the Rasa Hate? It's great. I mean, it's actually uh, well, very well received. And, um, people are quite excited over it. We are, we are doing our best right now to make sure that we can meet the demand. Of it's quite popular, isn't it? It is. I think the concept of Rasa um, is now really taking off with a lower price point. Uh, Rasa 8, which is you know, it's, it's got more uh, it's more appealing to the general public. We have had the 11, we have had the 14, and that addresses different market size, uh, different market segments. And I think the Rasa 8, being a low price point, is more affordable and you still uh, bring to you all the nice features of a really fast optical, optical system. So yeah. it's doing well for us. And uh, no new products from Celestron and 8 this year, but um, there should be some stuff in the pipeline. There is. So this year, at this year's Neve, we are talking about our new um, software, the update to uh, our CP, CPWI, right? Telescope Control Software. Um, so that's our biggest push right now at, uh, at Neve. And we have some accessory um, uh, intro uh, introductions for our new accessory items. Um, but we'll have some new exciting products we'll be launching later in the year. Um, Ready? Of course, we'll be one of the first person to <laughs> Thank you very much, Corey. Thank you. Cheers. What the hell is that? Presentation at NIAC, uh, great NIF so far. Yes. So, can you tell us what PRISM is and what it does and why it's better than uh, other astronomy software? So, PRISM is a one stop shop solution that does pretty much anything an amateur needs in astronomy. Uh, it goes from acquisition, uh, a sky chart, pre processing, and post processing, and a lot, a lot of analytical um, tools and data processing. Uh, Prism is a one-stop shop. That means no updates, no multiple windows, no multiple software. It's you start in Prism, and you finish in Prism. Look who I found! It's Trevor from Astro Backyard. How What's you doing, up? Trevor? Good man. <laughs> Good to see you in person finally. Yeah, we just uh, arrived at Neef, and I'm soaking it all in. And um, as you said, kid in a candy store. That's right. Oh, you saw my tweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. It is a candy store for us, it and is. we're just a couple of kids. I'm just mesmerized by all the shiny things and the the new big things and. 
it's looking good. It's almost too much, eh? Yeah, it's there's, overwhelming. Yeah, there, there's so much going on here. There's, there's, I'm guessing a lot of people recognize you too. Yeah, it's we're famous yeah. here. We're, um, we're minor celebrities, which is kind of, kind of very unique for me. <laughs> yeah, it's surreal, right? Yeah, yeah. Turns out there's a lot of people on the internet, so. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> okay, it's future Dylan here. Just inserting myself into the video quickly to say it was a huge pleasure to meet Trevor, and I got to talk to him a little bit more outside. Now, there's probably zero chance that if you're subscribed to me you're not subscribed to him already but in case you aren't please do yourself a favor and go subscribe to his channel he has really inspirational videos about astronomy and he included me in his NEF recap footage and overnight I've had like 500 new subscribers which is just insane because his channel is huge so thank you very much for that Trevor <laughs> there's another new subscriber so yeah anyway just super nice guy and on with the video so this is where I'm talking tomorrow after Alan Stern and before an Apollo astronaut. Okay, so I'm here at NIF 2019 with Bob Denny, the inventor of ASCOM. Thank you, Bob, for joining me. You're welcome. Uh, we were drinking last night at the bar and that was, that was also wonderful. It was, so we got a little <laughs> early um, sketch of what, we were, what ASCOM is doing now, so a little background was exchanged at the bar last night, which was helpful also. Exactly, and if you don't know what ASCOM is, go see the video that I did uh, before. Um, but ASCOM, well, you tell tell us what ASCOM is. Basically, it's a set of standard. It's used by programmers. So, as a person, you shouldn't even see ASCOM, but the programmers use it to provide a connection between programs like planetariums and devices like mounts. And it's a standardized protocol. So, all of the mounts look the same to a planetarium, so the planetarium uh, authors don't have to write special code for every mount out there. They just write that control code and it automatically works with all the mounts. Yeah. And that also is true of focusers, domes, everything else in astronomy. There's a standard for every type of device. And, and we know that as consumers, because when we buy something, whether it's a new camera or a new focuser, new whatever, and it says ASCOM compliant, we know it's going to work. Uh, unless, of course, we have a Mac. Uh, but we have some news. Uh, Bob Denny has been working on making ASCOM cross-platform compatible. Can you tell us how that's going to happen and how that's going to work? Right. The, the ASCOM that's on Windows right now uses a Windows service to, to provide the communication between the, the programs and the devices. What Alpaca, which is the name of the new technology, what it uses is the internet and it packages the, re the requests and the responses up and puts it over the internet. The technology even below that that is on the internet is within all of the languages on all of the different platforms, Linux, Mac, Android, iOS, everything. All of those programmers know this basic technology and all we did was provide them with a set of standard definitions that can be used. And the most important piece for the, for the short term is a gateway on Windows that can provide existing Windows devices access from the Mac. Does that mean that um, already there's a translator so that Macs yes. and Linux could use ASCOM compliant devices? That are on Windows. Yes, now. so if you had a plain wave mount, for example, that's running with its controller on Windows, mm. um, Patrick Cervale, who's the author of Carte du Ciel, which is a cross-platform planetarium that runs on Mac and, and Linux, that program can today because of what Patrick did, which was adding Alpaca, Alpaca to his program, it can talk into the Windows-based and con uh, the driver and control the plane wave telescopes. All he had to do was put the Alpaca into his program, and boom, there it is. So yes, so it's 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 a chicken and egg problem, right? You need both of them. We've got the chickens, and now we need some eggs out there on uh, Linux and Mac. In order for this all to work, anyone running ASCOM now needs to make sure they're running the, the latest version of ASCOM. Correct. Yep. There's been some discussions around about how updating ASCOM broke my something or other, and <laughs> we've always look into it and find out that isn't the problem. There's really not much to ASCOM itself. It's a set of standards and some libraries. Well, thank you, Bob Denny, and uh, see you down at the bar later. All right, yes, sir. <laughs> and thank you again for the, for the uh, birthday video. Oh, it's to. now on the ASCOM-standards.org website. 
uh, right in the middle. And it is, when yeah. you bring that up, there's Dylan's that. face on there <laughs> and his little guitar playing intro. It's brilliant. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Thank Bye -bye. you. So, show us that mad ink, Isaac. Oh my god. You sold the telescope to Yeah, I traded the telescope for this. Nice. <laughs> you got Pluto on there? I got Pluto right there. Yes. Not full Hi, planet God. status, but in the asteroid belt, it gets a shout out. Uh, oh, it's full planet status. And I know someone else who'd agree with me. High Point Scientific has been um, supporting the channel lately, which I hugely appreciate. Uh, but tell us why High Point Scientific. So High Point Scientific really exists to help amateur astronomers. Um, we're a retailer, but we honestly really don't care what we sell. We just care that more people are out there in the field using the equipment. Yep. Um, and that's why we have such a great technical team to support all of our customers. Yeah. And we've been in business for almost 20 years, and the technical efforts that we've made during that time, and the support that we bring to the table, has really kind of helped to shape our customer base and help them kind of grow throughout their journey. Yeah, it's clear that you guys love what you do, which is yeah, the case for a lot of vendors, really. Yeah, we're really lucky. Yeah. We're really lucky. Uh, so the Daystar style of bandpass filters designed to go in the eyepiece end of the telescope. And our new quark that we've got will just go right into the diagonal. Mm -hmm. And it has blocking filters in it. It has the Edelon crystal in it. And so all the bandpass work and all the blocking work is all put into one piece. So it just goes into the telescope. Yep. So you don't need to buy a dedicated solar telescope. You can no, buy it on no. one of these. You can. Yeah. And now if, with 80 millimeter or smaller telescopes, there's just not enough energy coming and being uh, absorbed in the telescope right. to worry about excess energy. But if you have a larger aperture, we suggest on the diagonal to add a UVIR cut filter. Right. And then you can just put that into your diagonal and uh, use that on larger apertures. And you've, so you've got different versions of this for reflectors, refractors, that sort of thing? We do. We have a variety of them. Uh, we're sold out of the combo quark, but the combo quark is used on SCT telescopes, or if you have maybe a long focal ratio refractor or a Quest Star, so that allows you to be mix it up a little more. But most of our folks start with the quark yep. that's got the Barlow inside to just drop in a, ref in a refractor. Uh, right. We have two versions of the quark. One is the chromosphere, one's the prominence. Most people don't realize with the chromosphere, you still see the prominences, mm -hmm. but that surface detail in the chromosphere is much more prominent. Sure. But once in, maybe one in 10 guys says, hey, but I only love those proms. I want the biggest, gnarliest proms. So give me the prominence model. And so maybe one to 10 by prominence versus chromosphere. It's, it's nine out of 10 by the chromosphere. Model. Brilliant. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time. You're very welcome. Jared, I use SGD and I love it. And it's been really popular in the last few years. Uh, can you tell us a little bit for people who don't use SGP what it is, what it does? Sure. Uh, Sequence Generator Pro is a image capture software. It runs your camera, your mount, focusers, uh, pretty much any piece of this astrophotography equipment that you can connect to your computer we will interface with. Uh, it was designed to let you walk away from your rig so you can go over to your friend's, uh, friend's rig while they're doing some imaging or look through a scope or while you can... Yeah, go have a beer, whatever you want to do. Um, get some uh, get some sleep if that's your thing. Uh, so yeah, so it's uh, it's geared towards the amateur and enthusiast amateur type market, uh, which I think most everybody that's probably a niche kind of falls into. I mean, I use SGP these days. I love it. I particularly love the framing and mosaic. Oh yeah, which is really powerful. Um, what sort of direction are you guys going to take with the software now? Whether it's just improving what's already there or yeah. new features in the pipeline? one. We're we're always improving. Uh, some new features that are coming out this year that are in the works as we're integrating with the uh, SkyGuard and SkyGuide, that full frame guiding software that Innovations Foresight's creating. Um, we're thinking about doing some cloud features coming up that might enable sharing and potentially unlock a lot more potential for us. So don't really want to say too much about that just because okay. we haven't uh, we haven't firmed anything up so I don't want to give false hope there. It's only um, YouTube. Right, it's only YouTube, right? <laughs> it's only the internet. Jeff Dickerman, Optech. Thanks for taking some time. I believe you have some new products this year. We do. We do. We have a couple new items. Uh, we have a, uh, a new motorized off-axis guider. 
So it's a three, full three inch aperture uh, guider. It's got a motor that works with our Focus Lynx controllers. Mm -hmm. Takes inch and a quarter lipstick uh, type guide cameras. Yep. All right. um, it's got a half inch of travel. You can get it in the motorized version or the um, manual version and you can add the motor later if you want. So what we've done is uh, we've got a very smooth helical in there. We decided to design our own. Um, it's, a, it's a dual start so we get uh, higher travel and uh, easy adjustment for the pick, uh, pick off stock adjustment. Another new thing is our uh, SVX series motors. Mm -hmm. So these are clutched motors. Uh, you can in, you can remove the clutch and uh, disengage it to actually do your manual focus, or you can re-engage it and have your uh, automatic focus. What's new and unique on this one, uh, the SVX 30 and the SVX 25, is it's all U USB and power right at the telescope, right up on top. So you can plug into your Excellent. your local PC control. Stephanie Anderson. Stephanie Anderson, who gave a talk at NIAC yesterday about the Brass Eight. How are you finding the Brass Eight? I love it. It's amazing, especially for Seattle skies where we rarely have enough uh, clear weather to do a long imaging session. So um, it's really cool because I can get a good uh, photograph in you know two hours or so. And tell us a little bit about your company. So Cloudbreak Optics, we're out of Seattle, Washington, and um, we are passionate astrophotographers who have a bricks and mortar store. We're also online, and uh, we just kind of grew up in this hobby and always wanted a hobby store that provided, uh, you know, the, the types of telescopes and cameras and accessories that we wanted. And pay for your own. And, yes, exactly. I, it's very much an addiction. Hi, hi, everyone. Hi, <laughs> hi, Dylan. Are you having a good night so far? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. I, I actually, I'm part of AAA New York, and I'm one of the amateur astrophotographers. So what's it like being an astronomy club in New York where you can't see most of the sky because of the light pollution. <laughs> so yes, uh, it's kind of upsetting that uh, yeah. you know you have to drive far to actually get a decent glimpse of uh, our galaxy. I feel the value of the dark sky mm. that much more because yeah. I know how light polluted the cities are. Is it a very active club? It is, it is. It's quite active. It's more than 600 uh, members in AAA. 100? Yeah, wow. uh, 600. Thank you so much and uh, it was a pleasure to meet you Dylan. Yeah, you and too. one of my bucket lists to <laughs> see you at NEEF and oh, I'm you. so glad to be being interviewed by Dylan. So <laughs> thanks, How I love you? your channel. So thank right. you so much. So Trevor from Astro Backyard, you shoot from Canada and you have a hugely popular channel. Obviously everyone knows who you are. How are you finding Neef so far? It's awesome man, there's nothing else like it. It's probably one of my favorite weekends of the year, if not my favorite, just because it's everybody who loves this stuff all in one place. And uh, with our hobby, as you know, astrophotography, it's a very niche hobby, right? So you, usually you're the only guy in the room that, that mm. wants to talk about taking pictures of space. Everyone thinks it's kind of cool, but you can't really relate to them. Whereas when you come here, uh, you can talk for hours. And uh, so I passed out at 9.30 last night just because <laughs> I've never talked so much in my life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, you shoot from Canada, so you know, I look at your videos and you get snow, you get the, the extreme conditions. Uh, I struggled cooling the camera down, you know, from 40 degrees to, to minus 15, but uh, when you cool the cameras, it must be a pretty easy task. You know what, I f we really get a well-defined all four seasons where I am in, in southern Canada. I'm right at the bottom, so I really can't complain to how they have it way up north. But yeah, so is it gets down to about minus 30 in the winter, and those nights where it's just really like, you ask yourself, why do I live here? And it, it, that plus the clouds, it's really unforgiving. So the cold fingers, that's the worst. But honestly, in the summer, on those like brutally hot nights where I'm just, you know, I'm polar aligning and there's sweat running down my face, <laughs> I feel like, you know what, the heat is, is, is a bit grueling too. Mm. And again, you're dealing with noise in the camera. So everyone has their own challenges. Uh, I think it's kind of fun to switch it up through the year and to look forward to something. And so I like those four, four defined seasons. Yeah, brilliant. And now tell me, as a Southern, hemisphere guy I don't really 
I don't really know what's up there for the Northern Hemisphere. Can you give me like your, your top three well, coolest Northern Hemisphere targets? Oh, three? I was thinking of this and I was Googling. I was like, okay, what do we have that you guys don't have? <laughs> because all the best stuff for us is in the south. Mm. So like when we were looking for a new house, it's like we got to have a view of that southern sky to get the core of the Milky Way. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of the great stuff, uh, Orion, and, and you get Andromeda, right? Sitting in a different spot. Just. Just. just yeah. Is it too low to get a... It's like, like a 11 degrees off the horizon oh, okay. for half an hour. So. Oh, that's the one then. <laughs> the Andromeda galaxy. <laughs> but nothing compares to, to your, your long list of targets. But also the Iris Nebula is one I was yeah, thinking of. Because yeah. I know that's near, that's near Polaris. Mm -hmm. So that's got to be that's tough. That's a beauty. And that, that is one I look at and I'm, I'm just awed by how beautiful it is as a, as a reflection it? over there. Yeah. The blue and the dust covering the stars and it actually gets so thick and brown in, in parts. Hmm. So yeah, that's it. Iris Nebula, Andromeda, and then I'm trying to think of one more that's a, hanging around the north. Uh, you get all the Cassiopeia stuff, right? Like uh, the Heart Nebula and Soul. No, we don't get that. There you go. <laughs> See, <laughs> that's this a, is easier than I thought. That's a beautiful one too. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. You're really missing out, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah. Okay. Last question. Uh, and maybe this is a, a bit, a bit of a behind the scenes, behind the curtain, but um, tell me about your sort of YouTube career. Is this something you're doing like more and more these days? Like how's that all going? Yeah. Yeah, it is more and more. And uh, in the beginning it was like, you know, why don't I just give this a try and see if anyone watches? Uh, and then like to my astonishment, people were subscribing and watching. I'm sure you had a similar thing. It's like, it was like a certain video comes out that kind of goes big mm -hmm. and then everyone's all suddenly everyone's following you. It, it was a really strange experience, but yeah, now I'm at the pace of about one video a week. And even though it's not the only thing I do, I do a lot of blogging on my website and social media stuff. It's my favorite thing. Mm. And it's how everybody seems to know me, right? Because YouTube is huge and video is so powerful. So it's like my number one priority right now is YouTube and then everything else kind of trickles from there. And it's, it's gotta be the most fun. I'm sure you can attest to that. Yeah, I agree totally. Thank you so much for taking the time, Trevor. Of course, man. <laughs>